Thousands of workshop exercises exist. However, few realize at the core of all of them are the same seven foundational activities. A post-up, affinity diagramming, landscape mapping, forced ranking, storyboarding, role-playing, and playback. So first up, post-up. A post-up is when participants individually generate content on sticky notes and then stick them up on the wall. Contributions are then captured, shared, and discussed, maybe even used in an input for a future exercise. Post-ups are used to generate a wide set of ideas that represent diverse perspectives in a time-efficient, democratic manner. They are helpful tactics for navigating those dominating participants, unproductive conversation, and really encourage full participation. And then next up, we have affinity diagramming. Think of affinity diagramming as an extension or next step to a post-up. It is the clustering of information, often on sticky notes, into relational groups based on similarities or themes. The benefits of affinity diagramming are twofold. First, it helps us discover patterns across a wide set of content. Second, when done collaboratively, it promotes a shared language. Participants can identify and align on what a specific theme or pattern is comprised of, especially if the theme names are generated collaboratively in the workshop. Okay, number three of seven, landscape mapping. If you were to take those themed groups from affinity diagramming and begin to assess if they have relationships between each other, it would be a landscape map. Landscape mapping is arranging content, commonly on sticky notes, into spatial significance so that we can understand the relationships and patterns across items and time. Landscape mapping is used in so many other maps empathy maps, customer journey maps, service blueprints, where we're looking at relationship across content. The fourth foundational activity is storyboarding. A storyboard communicates a story through images displayed in a sequence of panels that chronologically maps to the story's main events. Storyboarding helps us put context, ideas, users, and helps us tell stories around them. When based on real data and then used in workshops, they can take the focus off of our internal bias and help us actually understand user behavior, framing the experiences we create in a more holistic way. The fifth foundational activity is forced ranking. Forced ranking is the foundation of any other prioritization exercise you may be doing. This includes dot voting. This includes prioritization matrices. This includes the $100 test. This includes the NUF test. Forced ranking is a prioritization activity used for weighing one thing against another in a comparative collaborative format. So why do we need forced ranking? Well, as UX practitioners, we're usually caught in a balancing act of user needs, what's technically feasible, and what the business wants. Forced ranking helps us identify the most important things to focus on. This structured objective approach helps us achieve collaborative consensus while still satisfying the varied needs of the user and business. And up sixth, we have role play. Role play is a technique used in workshops to challenge biases and assumptions by shifting the lens that you're thinking about a problem. Role play, though it feels silly at times, in a workshop forces participants to just change the way they're thinking about something. By deliberately challenging the way attendees may already be approaching something, they're more likely to develop new thoughts and ideas. And last up, we have playbacks or share outs. It's the act of sharing in a workshop, which is an activity in and of itself. It's core to all workshops. It's especially vital when participants are working primarily in groups and you need to align as a bigger group. A couple of tips when it comes to playbacks, they should occur across the entirety of a workshop. The longer the workshop and the more participants, the more vital playbacks become to make sure that there's full alignment. Playbacks can be done in a small group when each participant plays back ideas that they came up with. Or you can go across groups when the larger group is all sharing. Playbacks can be as quick as a minute in high level shares or formally and prepared where they take up more time, maybe in the form of a skit or slideshow. Think of these seven fundamental workshop activities as ingredients that will be in every recipe you make. They act as a foundation for every UX workshop done and by understanding them and how you can combine them, remix them, and add different constraints, you can create almost any activity you'll need.